I look at a lot of Gru the Wanderer comics here. It's GruTube, but today I have five non-Gru comics that I'd like to show you. Hi, I'm Darren, these are my hands, and this is GruTube, where we appreciate the art of Aragonez. Today, the art of Aragonez is in the form of five of Sergio's comics that do not feature Gru the Wanderer. So we'll just get rid of these. Now, Sergio started cartooning when he was a child and first got paid for it when he was a child at school. He was drawing pictures for his classmates' schoolwork. Working in Mexico and then moving to the United States, Sergio did all sorts of work before his comic Grew the Wanderer was first published. And since then, he's been very prolific outside of the pages of his Bumbling Barbarian book. So let's get started looking at five comics from my collection that maybe you haven't read in a while. First up, Sergio Aragonez Funnies. Published by Bongo Comics from 2011 to 2014, Sergio's Funnies was a 12-book series featuring an assortment of autobiographical anecdotes, perplexing puzzles, slap-happy short stories, as well as Sergio's unique and hilarious pantomimes and gags. This is totally not the sage. Here's a story about the famous King Kong head that Sergio made for Bill Gaines at the Mad Magazine offices. Dinosaurs! Robot monsters! I almost feel like I've seen this gag before somewhere. Marginals, perhaps? Fans of the Gru Crew will probably be interested to know that Tom Luth does most of the coloring in Funnies, but because a lot of the book is typeset, Stan Sakai did not do any lettering. When hand lettering was done, Karen Bates generally took care of it. Ooh, actually, look at all the colorers here. Tom Luth, Nathan Hamill, Art Villanueva, Robert Stanley. Probably lots of crowd scenes. Funnies are funny, and I don't have enough of them in my collection. Next up, Sergio Aragonez. Boogeyman. Boogeyman is a humor-slash-horror comic that Sergio created with his friends from the Gru Crew. It was published in late 1998 by Dark Horse Comics. Mark Evanier helps with writing on most of the stories, although there are one or two guest writers. Stan Sakai letters and Tom Luth colors the covers of Boogeyman. Fortunately for him, inside the covers are all black and white. Each issue of Boogeyman features a handful of short stories where the antagonist receives a deathly comeuppance at the end. It's really a change of tone from the light-hearted Gru the Wanderer comics, and even though Gru features much carnage at the hands of the Wanderer, the violence is always comedic, and rarely would I shy away from letting my young boys read it. Boogeyman, on the other hand, while humorous, perhaps hits a bit harder because of its contemporary setting situations. The whole comic is neat in that it has a wraparound story of sorts, with a banjo-playing gravedigger, Mr. Diggs, narrating the whole book. I must not go to sleep. If I do, the boogeyman will get me. The Happy Axe Murderer Part 2, more blood, more gore. And here's a neat kind of little trick that Sergio did with the covers. All right, on to the next one. The Mighty Mangor. Mangor? Magnor. In 1993, a comic was published that was my first experience of a non Gru comic by Sergio. This was going to be fantastic. I loved Gru, and now I'd have two monthly comics by Sergio to enjoy. Published by Malibu Comics, Magnor was a six issue miniseries featuring the adventures of a mysterious, otherworldly superhero befriended by a couple of comic creators as they fight a parade of villains and giant robots. The Gru crew was back in full force for the mighty Magnor, with Mark helping write, Stan lettering, and Tom coloring. No Tom. Colorist? Violent Hughes? Sounds like a pseudonym to me. This guy's definitely not Arcadio. And Magnor's got a little bit of a tick vibe happening here. 
the mighty Magnor. Giant robots. Everybody loves penguins. Definitely not Gru's butt. Absolutely beautiful two-page spread. Gru the Wanderer. There was hope that after the six-issue miniseries, there would be more Mangor, Magnor. But Malibu didn't last beyond 1995. I think Malibu was bought out by DC. And perhaps because of that, six Magnor comics was all we got. Well, seven, if you count the special collector's edition pop-out cover on issue number one. And no, I haven't opened my special collector's edition pop-out. Pop-out? Pop-up. Pop-up? Pop-out. Whatever. And now, my earliest Sergio comic. The DC superstars present the wild and wacky world of Sergio Aragonez, Way back in 1976, DC published this 52-page book of all-new stories and gags by Sergio Aragonez as part of their DC Superstars series. This was issue 13 of 18, and other DC superstars featured the Teen Titans, Superboy, The Flash, Space, and Strange Sports. Wild and wacky is a weird way to describe this book. While it's not quite as violent as Boogeyman, the stories in this book also lean towards horror. Sergio frequently employs his characters used in Plop magazine, The Devils, Cain and Abel, and The Witches, one of whom looks a little bit like a precursor to Decarba. 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 1976 was way before the Gru crew assembled, so no Tom, Stan, or Mark. In fact, no credit for colors or letters at all, except for Tatiana Wood, prolific DC colorist and ex-wife of comic writer, artist, and fellow Mad Magazine contributor, Wally Wood. Getting trapped in an oil pipeline? This is horrific. Check it out. It's the Loch Ness Monster. Sergio the Ringmaster. I want muscles fast. Secret agent pen? I'm all over that. And finishing things up, Space Circus is my fifth non-Gru Sergio comic today. Would you believe I've only just got into Space Circus recently? Imagine the movie E.T. the Extraterrestrial, but instead of E.T. being stranded on Earth with Elliot... Elliot stows away in E.T.'s spaceship because he thinks it's the best video game arcade he's ever seen. And instead of the E.T.'s being these benevolent gardeners, they're a troop of dysfunctional circus performers on the run from space pirates. Yeah, I guess that's nothing like E.T. But that's okay, because Sergio Aragonez's space circus is out of this world. Published by Dark Horse in 2000, Space Circus is a four-issue limited series written by Sergio and Mark Evanier, lettered by Stan Sakai, and colored by Tom Luth. And outside of Gru, I think this is some of the best artwork that Sergio and Tom have ever worked together on. Especially when Tom is coloring the spaceships and Sergio is drawing two-page spreads of them. Oh, it's marvelous. Look at that space pirate ship. Beautiful. The curves. The gradients. Heading down to the arcade. Check this out. Ladies, gentle things, and creatures of all ages, may I direct your attention to this artwork. There are no words to describe how awesome this is. And of course, that is Space Referto down there. Beautiful. Look at the curves and the mist and the shading. Oh. And the story is engaging. The characters are funny. It's also original too. Really wonderful work that I cannot recommend enough. Space Circus. Get yourself a Gru lunchbox while they're now available. Coming soon, Gru and Referto. Well, Sergio fans, because you made it this far... I'll remind you to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and that you have notifications turned on. I hope you enjoyed this look at a few of Sergio's non-Gru titles, and I hope you'll join me again soon when I'll be back with some more GruTube. 
Take care, everyone.